the breakdown is really about to occur. Okay. When we talking about breaking an artist, this clip will give you three things that you need to do or be aware of when you're in the process of breaking an artist, or if you are the artist, breaking yourself. Business is business. You need to touch people at least seven to eight times to get them to buy it. Right there. Gym number one. You need people to see you over and over again, touch and feel over and over again. Mm -hmm. Rick Ross just said this without even saying this. Yeah. He got sold himself. He basically said, you sell me if I see you everywhere I go. Yeah. Multiple times. Not just one time, multiple times. And a huge part of breaking an artist, right? And you'll see as we talk deeper into it, it's not just about your fans, you're really breaking yourself and giving an impression to the fans, the industry at large, mm -hmm. right? And your peers. Mm -hmm. Everybody is seeing this motion and you're selling everybody by popping up again and again and again. To so the fans, you're becoming, oh, this artist that we really want to listen to at this level and there's so many of us, we want to see you at shows. We love mm -hmm. you, right? Mm -hmm. To your peers, you become, oh man, I see what they're doing. I respect what they're doing. I like what they're doing. Actually, I want to capitalize. Yeah, how can I get in on that? <laughs> and how can bit? I get in on that <laughs> shit, right? So now you become an opportunity on that side, not even in a negative way, but people just realize, oh, there's leverage in working with you. A yeah. bigger artist might say, oh, that's the person to come up. It might make me look cool, right? Or like yeah. I know what's yeah. going on. An artist that's already on your level, like, hey, let me hop on this train so I can get some visibility on the way up. Your peers are also being sold. And then the industry is being sold. Ooh, how can we invest? How can we get to the table before this other label gets to the table or whatever the types of investment happen? Mm -hmm. There's three people or three stakeholders that are being sold at least when you start to break as an artist. So it's not just TikTok. We still go to radio. Mm -hmm. We still got T-shirts and merch and we still touching down in three the Three records top to, 40 right now. Yeah, like we still in, in people's faces and... And like we just don't rely on TikTok to sell the record. Right. Like here goes the other thing. You don't allow the platforms or wait on the platform itself to sell the record. You can't wait on TikTok to blow the record up all the way. You mm -hmm. can't wait on Instagram to blow the record up all the way. People are out here complaining. Oh man, like TikTok isn't breaking records. TikTok is gonna create the spark. Like we had a moment in history where things were crazy, like unprecedented, where you could just throw shit into the hit machine and, and, a, and a hit come out almost. Yeah, yeah. Now, okay, we back to the basics, right? It's still easier to get a hit, but now you got to have some strategy. You got to know what you're doing. And what does that look like? You don't rely on the platform to blow you up. You allow that platform to create a spark. Yeah. But you are in charge of if that shit actually spreads to Instagram or not, whether it goes to YouTube or not. The merch and all those things he just touched here, whether it translates to the world or not, that's your job, your team's job. Yeah, exactly. that's the biggest thing I got, right? It's like, yo, we don't we don't wait to make it real. Like we take it to the things in real life that that make it a, a, a what am I looking for? A, a none a no longer just an internet thing, right? Which is what mm -hmm. a lot of artists kind of fall short when they have these viral moments and things to the point of breaking is it never really leaves the internet. You know what I'm saying? So as, as much as we see it, as big as it feels like in that bubble, there's never any like real life evidence that this moment is as big as it looks on the internet. And people pick up on that and they eventually, I think, lose faith because of it. So like he's saying, it's like, yo, like, this is just a piece of the machine, the digital machine, but we're gonna make sure it hits right here. We're gonna make sure there's merch and street teams and these things that, you know, we're essentially gonna do everything else mm -hmm. that we would have did whether or not this shit hit. It's just now we have the attention and the spark from the TikTok moment to add to it, which is, like you said, it's just like, I don't know, I feel like people try to look at how to how to get by with just one part of the machine, you know what I'm saying? Which we've seen a lot of yes. artists do successfully. Like, maybe 12 different parts, but we've seen people be successful using one or two. That, because it goes so crazy on yeah. that one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But they forget they're like, oh man, in the perfect world, I should be doing all of these things at, mm -hmm. the, at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Or, or more importantly, the ones who are watching don't forget, they don't even understand that that's an yeah. anomaly. Yeah. Most people have to go multiple platforms, like yeah. really work it to blow those cases that one thing and they really take off, one, they're still gonna spread to other platforms yeah. in, um, in general. But two, like those are moments in time that are very hard to duplicate. Yeah, exactly. You're an anomaly.
That's it. Yeah. That's it. On August 12th, myself, Sean, and J.R. McKee will be hosting a live event in Atlanta where we'll be sharing some of our best marketing, branding, and content strategies that we haven't really been able to put out anywhere else. So if you want a reason to come to Atlanta, or if you're in Atlanta, or if you just want to dap us up and see if we're real, go and get your tickets at nolabelsnecessary.com or check the link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. We're only doing 60 tickets, like a hard 60 tickets, so you want to make sure that you're one of those 60 once again, nolabelsnecessary.com or check the link in the description and we'll see you there. Let's see what else he got. Actually, we're actually touching the people mm -hmm. and making it visible. So people are like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, all right. I heard, I saw this, I heard this. Like, take an example. Right now we got one of the biggest records in the country. The, the J.K. Mack No Love record has got the big dance that everybody's doing. But like what we did was we were very, 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 very smart because we made sure that the girl that created the dance was in the video. Mm. Nice. Which was another point for people to be like, oh, I like this kid because he's smart and he likes influencers. Because mm. there's so many records where the influencer never made it to the video or never got a chance to, you know what I'm saying, good customer service. That part's huge, man. I mm. love the word customer service. Exactly. This is reminding the artist that you are doing a service, right? To the audience, a lot of times it's like, hey, come listen to me, 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 check my stuff out. Mm -hmm. But it's like all of this is a customer service business. When you say it's a people business, all right, everybody knows the music industry is a people business, yeah. right? Relationships business. Yeah. Well, customer service is essentially a better way to even streamline that of saying, hey, it's not just people, but you have to figure out how to serve people. We go back to the stakeholders, which is why this is so important. He just said, influencers haven't been getting their love in some music videos, right? It's like, I came up with a dance, I got this thing popping, you showed me no love. Mm -hmm. This is his way of saying, hey man, like appreciate it, right? Yep. We're going to show you some love, we're going to give you some clout. What was the term that you used? You used uh, Social currency? You know, no, or I don't know, maybe it was like compensated with clout or something, whatever. It was a little alliteration that you said earlier, but <laughs> I forgot what it was. But the fact that if an influencer gets my song popping, there's more than one reason that I need to figure out some way to acknowledge them. And yep. I just alluded to it when I said you got three different type of people that you got to sell. Yep. One, if I put this influencer in my video, right, or I show them some type of love, it shows me as one, an appreciative person to that particular influencer, yep. right? Great. But, oh, man, I, well, who are, like that, that influencer is nobody. What does that mean? I don't care. Well, that's when you look at the bigger picture. Today, more than any day, people are looking at whether they like somebody or not as a whole, right? People are investing in brands and using brands that are lower quality just because it matches their identity and how they like how people move, mm -hmm. right? Or I don't like that brand because I don't like who that person is as a person. So your fans and the culture is looking at like, oh, how does he treat people or how does she treat people? Like, oh, this influencer popped this person off and he didn't put them in the video oh does he not like something about that type of person and whatever their identity is we've seen that in certain videos yeah, right yeah. where um the track star video was a big moment like that right oh yeah I forgot that, that was a huge yeah, moment like that yeah, where it's like oh yeah. okay man you got any problem with you know dude's orientation or how he, how he moves so now you get all these other assumptions and now you're either selling to one specific audience or not selling to another audience or you're cutting everybody out. But these decisions are the PR that's happening by how you treat the influencers and people that have started to get your shit moving, right? Yeah. yeah. That's the customer service of it all. So a lot of artists aren't thinking about that. And But again, as you are breaking, that period is literally the period when you're winning everybody's hearts. Yeah. Right when you think about oh Cardi B's on the rise, it's not just oh this song is popping. When Cardi B is on the rise, when the artist is breaking, then you're making people have a decision and thought about how they think about you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like oh Cardi B's so funny, or oh man she's uh so real and transparent, or who else has been somebody like on the rise and going through that breaking period. Ice Spice, what would you say the conversation has been about Ice Spice as somebody who like broke last year? Like while she was breaking? Yeah, like while she was breaking, when they started to make some sort of impression beyond the music. I think the first impression I became aware of was her 
being a bad performer and then it started like oh is she gonna last long you know because i think like her first show ever was a rolling loud show or something See, that's like. that's different though that's the more artist specific i'm yeah. talking about even the winning their hearts the winning their hearts is more like you know how <sighs> they talk about this pretty pr- privilege type of shit yeah. that was like a conversation around ice spice but then it also got negated in some ways because they, i've seen conversations saying ice spice is like she's nice and cool yeah. and she well, respects yeah, okay. other women and yeah. things like that. Yeah, That's so, what I'm talking about. So that to me didn't really start. It's probably about five or six months into it. When she started talking more, like she started doing more mm-hmm. interviews, she started, you know what I'm saying, being a little bit more vocal. Yep. And then she had enough time to be unproblematic because then you look at that stuff and you think like, man, she hasn't done anything in the last Unprob- six, problematic. Months, six months. That's you know the word. Saying? Yeah, like she hasn't like talk shit about anybody or beef that like you know what I'm saying you can reflect and like man she is pretty cool so mm-hmm. I would say yeah probably about like six months in but that to me changed the first narrative which the first narrative was like oh is she gonna last long she's not a great performer she got one song blah blah and then it was like oh she's cool you know what I'm saying? Like she's cool, she's nice. You know what I'm saying? Like that's we can, when, that's when we you start to break. <laughs> when people say, "Oh, they you cool in yeah. some form of fashion," where they have more of a personality connection yeah. with you beyond the music itself. Even Gorilla had multiple songs. Like she was ringing off. I think they had to slow down with her because she was about to fetty wop the whole game. Like she was coming with him, right? Yeah. But then it became like this narrative of like I, she was real in a different different way than. The Cardi B reel they talk about, but it was like a was it like a humble type of thing or like I think so a, I think, around the way you know you, you know what I'm saying yeah. that, that they were kind of doing with her yeah like the girl next I don't think they were girl next door in her I won't say that I think it was just like the opposite I of mean what, it depends on what door like they were I mean, girl I mean, next door and it was just a different door <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it was just the the. The juxtaposition of the genre that she's in, right? Like she's in bad bitch rap, which like bad bitch rap is very braggadocious. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Very like, like they out there, they the characters twenty four seven. Then she's not like she she makes the music, but then she's like real life. She just kind of chill. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like even like the interviews and stuff I've seen her do with streamers, like Ka Ka Sinat and all those people. Just always so she always just like chill. You know what I'm saying? Very like low key, quiet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like man, you can't help but like not like it. And I think what also helped her. Which we haven't touched about talked about in a minute, but you know we was on it pretty heavy. Is whoever started running her meme strategy that completely flipped everything for her? You know what I'm saying? It was like say it specifically. Go ahead and put it out there. So there, I don't say was a point because I still do it every now and again now. But like they, you can tell that whoever her marketing team is has really good relationships with meme pages, and so what I'll see every few weeks is just the most random memes and discussion topics around Ice Spice. Like I saw one a couple of days ago. It was like this rap page posted, you get a call at 3 a.m., you know what I'm saying, who you going to see first? And it was like on the left it was Ice Spice, on the right it was Lotto. And I was like, this shit random as fuck. Like why is this on the rap page? But, I, but I'm like, but you know, my marketer brain kicking in. I'm like, bro, that's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a nigga pulling the strings with this shit. He knew the ass was going to stop everybody. You know what I'm saying? You get engaged by the headline. Now you talking about her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but like her team is really good at putting those types of memes and stuff out on, on the meme accounts in a way that like, like I said, I haven't seen really seen too many of the girls from the bad bitch rap genre really do that. Usually when they do it, it's on. It's like they accidentally kind of cross over. You know what I'm saying? Like it seems like Ice Spice's team has been controlling that for a minute. Yeah, they yeah. I mean, they're really heavy with it. I mean, yeah. I think the the ones that's more interesting interesting to me is Glorilla's because it's not so heavy with it and just be everywhere and omnipresent. Yeah. But it was clean in terms of again saying what type of person this girl like, oh, let's show her at Peace in not Pizza Hut, working at McDonald's. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like she had a narrative with a lot of women that I've spoken to where she's unproblematic in in many ways. Yeah. In terms of that type of problematic that they're talking about like you know it's like oh yeah and then things she, that she talks about is a little bit it's adjacent to like scamming right she has her own pocket it's adjacent to i'm a i'm just a bad bitch like it's not she's actually talking like a nigga <laughs> like when you really like it's, yeah yeah bro the yeah. other like there's other, <laughs> this is gonna take us too far off topic but the other women they say are talking like dudes but really they're just talking like I know women to talk, but it's just putting put it actually putting it out there public. Mm. But like the way her bars were de- are delivered, 
I are there's fewer women who really deliver the bars the way that Glorilla is doing. But that's again a side of the point. But I think that actually had a, a part of how they branded her.